Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Careers to Entertain, a speaker series where we explore different pathways in entertainment and showcase our very own Cal State LA alum in the field. I'm Terry Lopez, chair of the Cal State LA Entertainment and Arts Alumni Network and advisory council member on the CSU Entertainment Alliance. Our speaker series aims to benefit alumni and current students to enrich our community with personal and professional tools to help you succeed in the industry. A little bit about myself. I'm a CSULA 2003 alum and currently work as Director of Inclusion and Equity at the Writers Guild of America West, where me and my team work, produce, work, I'm sorry, work with producers, studio and network executives, agents and managers, and writers to advance diverse representation across the industry. We are excited to learn from our featured guest speakers, but before we start, I'd like to go over a couple housekeeping rules. First, please be aware that this session is being recorded. During the program, feel free to ask your questions in the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screens. Now about our guest. It's my pleasure to introduce Diana Luna, Executive Director, and Cal State alums, Ian Caballo and Jose Medina Rodriguez from the National Association of Latino Independent Producers, whose mission is to discover promote and inspire Latine content creators across all media platforms. They serve the needs of diverse content creators, including producers, performers, writers, directors, and industry professionals. Our moderator, Lija Villalobos, is a writer, producer, consultant, educator, and lecturer. She is best known for writing and executive producing the indie feature film Under the Same Moon, La Misma Luna, acquired by Fox Searchlight and the Weinstein Company at the Sundance Film Festival. Via Lobos has de developed projects for multiple studio networks and streaming services, including ABC, NBC, ABC Family, Lifetime, Hallmark Hall of Fame, FX, Showtime, BET, Max, and Stars, among others. And she was a consultant a cultural consultant on the Academy Award-winning Pixar movie Coco and the Disney movie Planes. Her most recent film, Guati, was released in 2021. Before becoming a writer-producer, Via Lobos was a studio executive at the Walt Disney Company, where she oversaw the writing fellowship program and launched the director's training program for the studio. Via Lobos was then hired as a current programming executive at the WB, where she oversaw six primetime shows. Via Lobos is currently developing a six part music driven limited series titled Q, inspired by the classic novel Don Quixote de la Mancha. And she is attached to write the American adaption of the South African feature film Sync. Via Lobos is the recipient of the Humanitas Prize for TV film. Um, for the TV film, Firelight. She re received her MFA from Anatoc University in creative writing. I will now hand it over to Lihia to begin our discussion. Hi, everybody. Um, it always trips me a little bit that I don't get to see anybody that's in, <laughs> that is here, but I see that many of you have joined us. So hopefully this will be a fun conversation for uh, many of you. and. Um, and we will leave a time at the end for you guys to be able to ask questions of the panelists as well. I think a lot of the time they are much more interested in hearing from the people attending uh, than, than me asking questions. <laughs> so I'll make sure that that definitely uh, does happen. But thank you so much, everybody, for joining us and uh, in particular, obviously, our panelists. Thank you for being here. And um, so why don't we just start by doing uh please don't make long introductions <laughs> I just didn't have so embarrassed about my introduction so <laughs> include as much as you would like or as little as you would like we will start with Ian if you could just tell us a little bit about you just in general but also your specific role with Nalip hello Chris thank you um so my name is Ian um I am a Cal State Northridge alumni um, I studied uh, a television production, and then I also have a minor in interactive marketing, um, which is essentially just social media marketing. 
Um, after college, I found my way to Dalip, and now I am the administrative and events coordinator. And what that means is just handling all of the meetings and helping all the documentation go through all the administrative tasks that you can think of. And then I also help the pre to post production of all event logistics um, to help everyone have a great time at our events. Short and sweet. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ian. Uh, what about you, Jose? Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Jose. I am a writer. I went to Cal State Northridge as well, uh, but I went to school for producing. Um, I am a program coordinator at Nalib. Uh, we're also known as the Latino Lens Department, uh, which is more of the didactic arm of the organization where we oversee uh, a lot of the incubator programs, fellowships, um, and a couple other exciting things coming soon uh, that we can talk about yet. <laughs> I'm going to ask you another question just based on what you just said, because I think it'll be important for our students, Jose, which is like, I am a writer. That's the first thing that you said. And then you said, but I went to Cal State <laughs> Northern as a producer. And I think that that happens a lot with our students in TVF in particular, where they, you know, they come in thinking that they are doing something and then they end up something else. So can you just give a, give me a little bit more of a sense of what you meant by that, that you're a writer, but that you went uh, to school as a producer so that they also have an understanding of how that can happen? Yeah, I mean, you know, since I started in school as a producer, I, I kind of always knew that I wanted to go in, into entertainment, um, but I never felt fulfilled by like the limitations of creative creativity uh, within producing. And luckily during the pandemic, not luckily, but during the pandemic, um, I one of our professors pivoted into uh, our assignments. So we had to do a, an original pilot uh, and then pitch it to her as our final. And so um, I did that and I fell in love with the whole process of world, build, world building and creating characters. And uh, I wanted to change majors, switch majors, but it was too late. It was very complicated. So uh, I just pursued screenwriting on my side, on the side. And um, we're still doing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah and, and and by the way, I, I think it's actually really important for producers to take at least one writing class. Yeah. And I think it's super important for writers to also really understand production. So you having both things, I think it's, it's going to be really uh, interesting and important to you as, as you continue in your career. Um, so thank you for that. Um, and Last but not least, of course, is <laughs> Diana Luna. Do you want to tell us a little bit about you? Yes, before I, I talk about my role at NALIP, I also want to point out something very, very interesting and important as well as we are in this career path of entertainment and media. And that is that uh, for Ian and Jose working for the nonprofit sector, it's also a very interesting component about that is totally unexpected. And maybe they never imagined that we will, they will take these roles, which they might sound, and I think uh, they both were very humble into how they were talking about their responsibilities. As where Nalib, we are managing hundreds of members. Our events are always, again, in the hundreds. And the reach that we have with the filmmaking community it's, um, it's nationwide and not only nationwide, but we reach everywhere that is uh, entertainment and media happening. So I think that opportunities like this, uh, it is always good to keep in mind as career paths that not they don't take you away as where we're talking about Jose being a, a writer and going into production because he actually has the opportunity to keep on going with both because of the resources that, that we have available. And, uh, and yes, I'm the executive director at NALIP. Um, I'm very fortunate to have this position as NALIP is turning next year, 25 years, supporting uh, independent filmmakers. And I think that's huge in a way that it is all about uh, having representation in this industry, which was the biggest challenge that I'm um, facing in this career. My background, it is very high into academia slash the creative industries. For many years, I've been supporting creatives to find a career path to professionalize their creativity, uh, which is something that sometimes we find it difficult as a filmmaker when we wanna talk about our work, our craft, and sometimes we might not be maybe as focused into how we make a good living of it and how I have access to those places that I may not. 
So my background is yes, into that um, from um, developing master's degrees in arts management, art business, professional development programs for filmmakers. Um, one that I, um, I mean, I'm very fond of uh, is Tomorrow's Filmmakers Today, another program that is for emerging filmmakers that are ready to to the next step in their careers and so forth. So all these programs and the fact that I I find this urgency for our filmmakers to have the face and the place that they deserve is what takes me to, to Nalip and to celebrate next year our 25 years. Fantastic. And uh, I think I, I mentioned to you, Diana, that I was actually at that first meeting 25 years ago. I know. It was a very small room. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that there were probably like 25, 30 people there at the time. Uh, so to attend, you know, some of your summits and events and literally see 300, 400, sometimes even more. Yes. People there, it's, it's, it's quite amazing the, the growth that the Nalib has done over the years. And also just a representation of how much more open the industry is. We have a long ways to go, obviously in terms of Latinx representation and programming, but it's growing, it's definitely growing. And I, and I think that gives a lot of opportunities to you guys as an organization to also, you know, be able to support um, a great deal more of filmmakers and content creators than ever before. Um, since, since this panel really is targeted to college students, I thought it might be important for them to get a little bit more of a sense about you, Diana, and how, you know, you just came from uh, LMU. You were working at LMU. You were working in academia there. Um, and I'm very curious about how your experience actually already working with a lot of students um, might help or might inform uh, what NetLeap does now. So if, if maybe you could talk a little bit about that and then we'll we'll go ahead and talk about some more of the specific programs that you may have there. But mm -hmm. um, if you can tell us how that experience actually can probably bring a new, mm -hmm. new eyes. A new, so, you know. so the main challenge, as we all know, is job attainment, regardless of the industry. What we want to make sure is that when we complete our college years or we complete a master's degree, that is taking us to that career path with the right salaries, with the right career opportunities. And most important with entertainment industry, it seems like this very high wall, no access, and where we are not seeing our stories on screen, where we are not necessarily seeing that the, the studios are well represented with the Latino workforce. Uh, we are so important in this economy. And in my in the past, one well, in the recent past, uh, with my work at LMU, I was the director of LMU Extension. And what it is, is that we created programs that we're preparing um, the students or the community to access those jobs, having the correct tools. So what happens now that I'm with Nalib is that yes, a huge emphasis that I have is on how do we prepare our community to have all the tools needed to access that industry. That again, it goes beyond the representation issue, but it's about also the preparedness for the job. And that is a very important aspect that we need to think about into how prepare, what are the tools that are needed that can go beyond our college experience and how I present myself into an industry that is so competitive, that has so many difficulties um, taking the Latino workforce. Uh, what are my options? How do I understand what is that, that door that can access uh, the opportunities? And that is why I we've been working really hard into understanding what are those tools that are needed that it could go from something as simple as being part of these kind of communities like Nalib. There are many organizations out there that can support uh, any college student that is interested in, in, what, in actually in whatever field to be part of a community. I'm a strong believer of that into how do you create your network and the connections that you need in order to enter the, the workforce. And, and I think it's where Nalib became a very um, 
natural transition of my skills into the, the entertainment world. So yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. And just to clarify, so at LMU Extension is not what UCLA Extension is, which is actually, you know, classes for people that are not actually going at UCLA. In your case, it was really to try to figure out how do you extend your uh, your contacts from student into the professional world? Uh, both. Both of them. Oh, okay. Pretty okay much, it's pretty much like UCLA. Okay. Uh, uh, very focused, again, like UCLA in uh, in in job placements. I mean, that's pretty much, I mean, I'm very passionate about uh, having the creatives, uh, again, having those jobs and professionalizing their careers. So that's pretty much what was happening also with LMU. Okay, got it. Um, so let's get a little bit into the into the specifics about uh, Nalip and what you guys do. So the next question really was about what are the main programs or the, the main areas of emphasis? I don't know if you want to split this where a couple of you talk about some. Now, Diana, how would you like mm -hmm. to split the question? Well, I will begin by saying that uh, as I mean, Alip right now, it, we are very happy about creating a very strong team. And this year, as we know, of, of we going through the difficulties in the industry, we have had the opportunity to rethink about what are the things that our community are needing the most? Um, because again, uh, there are so many people that has been laid off. I mean, and the, I mean, the, 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 the strike and the whole, uh, context that the entertainment industry is living right now is transforming. So how do we transform and how do we make sure that we prepare our community for those changes? So, and I also I would like to include Ian and Jose um, to, to talk about the programs that we have because now uh, we are opening again uh, the programs that we, that we had on hold but also we created uh, new ones. For example, this summer we had Latinx Connect that it was tailored for those that wanna jump into the executive path, working for a studio, sorry, as executives. And sometimes we don't think much about that into what would it be like to work as um, um, producing a show or a, a program developer, you know, those 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 jobs that are also an in incredible opportunities. So we have the uh, this event, but also uh, we on next year and we're prepared with uh, great initiatives, but I will let Ian and Jose talk about them. Maybe Jose, you can talk about our Latino Lens programs that are very cool and coming soon. Yeah. Uh, of course. Uh, so we have uh, two active programs that are about to start uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we have our Women of Color Incubator, uh, which is it supports women of color directors. Uh, it is sponsored by Netflix. And essentially the program is we select four to five female directors. Uh, they receive a grant from Netflix and Nalip, and they're able to produce their short film with all culminating in a, uh, a special screening that we do at our Diverse Women in Media Forum uh, in March. And you spent all these months with an intensive uh, mentorship and uh, you learn how to go from script to screen um, and you make your short film. Uh, and then we also have our stars writers. Let me, talk a little, let me let me ask you a little bit, a, a couple more specific questions about that program. Of Just to confirm, one is, is for women of color. So does that mean that it opens up to women outside of Latinx women? Yes, it does. Okay. I was not aware that you guys did programs outside of just Latinx programs. So that's really good to know. Two, when you say it's sponsored by Netflix, does that mean that Netflix is paying for the full budget of the short film if you get chosen? Yeah, you, you get a grant. A I believe it's $30,000 uh, in a grant. Each. Uh, each, each filmmaker, yes. That's uh, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it's a great amount of money to make your short film. Uh, if you know about making short films, it's so expensive. Uh, so it's a great help. And uh, you're you're able to make really great quality work. Uh, so, if you, so, you, so if you're chosen, you can pretty much assume as long as you can come up with a budget for 30000 it will be fully paid. Yes. In addition of getting the mentorship as you go through the program. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, then the last thing I was curious about that is Let's suppose like, you know, the, the, the four women or the, or five women, I guess it was, um, who do their, who finish their short film. Is there any, uh, is there any assurance from Netflix that that short will air on Netflix or is it just their involvement is in terms of the budgeting of it. And then your short film, you can submit to like 
film festivals or whatever. I'm just curious if there's yeah, like a component um, of the ticket mm -hmm. screen. The short can be uh, distributed to festivals that it doesn't need, have to carry the label if that's needed. Uh, but also we're in the process of conversations with Netflix into finding the way to also have them a stream that it's not guaranteed, but that those are the conversations. But the festival support, it's there. We provide also from Nalib uh, waivers to these uh, participants uh, for the different festivals. And I think the cool part about here for everybody to keep in mind, as you go through your career, is into how do you build these teams? So when these opportunities arise, that you have a very strong team, not only you as a director, but having your producer, your DPs, um, I think that this work uh, that we do with entertainment, and, and in this case, uh, create, just producing a short, it is about those, um, your friends. It's about having a, a great team. So when the opportunity is here, you're able to jump in. With awesome. This next okay. Uh, sorry, Jose. I just wanted to sort of expand on it so that they understand how great that opportunity actually is if they submit. Okay, mm -hmm. you were going to talk about a second program as well? Yes, so we, our second program right now is our Stars Writers Intensive, which is a collaboration between Nalib and then another nonprofit called uh, New Filmmakers Filmmakers LA, which if you're not familiar and you're an emerging filmmaker, also check them out. They're amazing. Um, please do. Um, but yeah, so this program is, uh, a, I believe it's a nine-week intensive where it's divided into two phases, uh, which the hope of the program is to get writers who are not as experienced in writers' rooms to get them into writers' rooms. Uh, all with the help of stars and the stars executives, they are able to go from a, an idea or a treatment and then workshop the treatment within the workshop or the fellowship um, and then pitch it to executives and uh, hopefully get a job within stars uh, or just be, have a, a really solid spec script uh, to use uh, in the future. And you're talking about stars in terms of like the paid network, yes. Yes. Paid, like S-T-A-R-Z. Stars, yes. Not, not stars. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, great. So that's more focused in terms of TV writers, obviously, than feature writers, correct? Yes. And it's more of a workshop on how to get them into a writer's room. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Got it. Uh, great. Um, Ian, did, did you have a couple of programs that you wanted to discuss? Or, or Diana, do you want Ian to, to get into some other stuff? You're on mute. Uh, it will be wonderful to talk about the opportunities that we have for uh, the, our college um, folks and people that have just recently graduated. Yeah, um, so we do actually offer internships, um, thanks in part to uh, the LACC, which is the Los Angeles uh, County of Arts and Culture. Um, every summer, uh, we provide the opportunity for three interns to join the NALEAP team. And they help us out with various um, projects, whether you're assisting with all of the live events, um, supporting our Latino Lens team, or helping out our communications and digital team. Uh, there's a place for everyone to kind of learn about uh, Nalib and also start navigating uh, what they like and what they want to see in the entertainment industry. Um, so very briefly, every April, the applications go out on the LACSE website. And then starting in June till about early March, um, we fulfill those internships for 400 hours and they get to be a part of our team for a little bit. Um, and they get to help out in various um, events with like our Diverse Women in Media Forum, um, our Nalit Media Summit, our new event that Diana just talked about, Latinx Connect, and then also our holiday party that we hold annually. Okay, so when, when you talk about um, June to March, you said June to March, correct? Yes, correct. Okay, uh, the question is, and, and those are internships. The first question is, is that a paid internship or for school credit? That's the first question. The second question is, are they supposed to be working in that internship all the way from March, from, from June until March, or do you split it into summer, fall semester, winter semester? If it's not a paid internship, um, can they receive school credit 
And if so, like, have you gone through the process of getting clearance for that? Because I can walk you through that after the meeting, because uh, it's a process for sure. Uh, but it, just giving us a little bit more clarity about like how the internships are, are handled. And you said three per year that you have? Yes, that's correct. Internships per year. Okay, great. Like, if you could just walk me a little bit more so that they're more clear about that, that would be great. Yeah, I'd love to go in more detail. So um, thankfully, because of LACAC, it is a paid internship. Um, we typically allow the um, interns to work about 20 to 25 hours a week. Uh, that way they can still fulfill any other jobs or school that they might have at the same time, um, but also dab a little bit into the entertainment industry and get to learn. Um, let's see, you, we have done school credit in the past, but we typically stray towards um, having both. So we've done the work credit, um, but it would have to be also through LACC. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so no unpaid internships um, at NALEAP at this time. Um, but instead, uh, if you aren't able to commit to the internship, um, we do also accept volunteers um, for all of our events. And the volunteers help out with everything from like the event registration, um, being a production assistant, helping out everyone, um, getting to the right rooms and the right sessions, um, helping out with their digital team communications. Uh, there's lots of roles that uh, happen during the events to make them uh, flow really well. Um, so those are two really great ways to get involved um, with Nelly. And then also, um, I'm assuming like if they are volunteering, let's suppose that they are volunteering for the week of the event, right? Or for the day yeah. or a couple of days before and all that, that they also, because of their volunteering, they get to attend for free, technically. Oh, yes, free. of course. Yes, They're yes. able we, to actually listen to the panels and those kinds of things. Yeah, so um, our events are for NALEAP members, um, but for our college students, which uh, usually is our biggest uh, group of volunteers that we receive, or people who just moved um, to the LA area. Um, we only ask for four hours of volunteer time, um, just so that uh, you can kind of see uh, what it's like to work, uh, the production of an Elite event, um, but also you get to enjoy yourself and you get to start building those networking relationships and get to meet other people um, we're not trying to gatekeep the information from everyone. We want to give everyone the opportunity to learn, but also get experience um, with our organization. Great, fantastic. Thank you so much, Ian. So in, in that uh, explanation in terms of internship, internships, there were a couple of things that were brought up, Diana, that maybe you can expand a little bit more on. One is he mentioned Latino Lens. Uh, so our students may not be familiar with what that actually means. He also mentioned the Women in Media um, Summit or Day um, that I think might also be interesting for them to find out a little bit more about. And then any other program that you that, that you might want to you know talk about. Oh, absolutely. So NALIP is a membership organization. What does that mean? that if you are Latino and you are in this field of work, you should definitely join uh, an organization like this. Why? Because this is the place where you can find your people, the resources, and also many different opportunities to connect and to meet others that are um, might like so, for, for example, we have, yes, at the beginning of the year, we have uh, the Diverse Meeting Women Forum. So if you're a member, you can join for free this event. And it's incredible because we bring very high level executives to talk about the current issues in terms of uh, women in media. And I, I I love that event. I think it's is one of the, we get a very well attended because it brings the passion and this unity within our community. And it's not necessarily, again, as we mentioned before, on, not for on, it's not only for Latinas, it's for all uh, women of color. Then uh, yes, as a member- One more thing about that. When when you talk about you, I'm assuming that you probably mean, uh, or, or, or please clarify, is women or women identifying? Correct. Correct, Absolutely. okay. Just, just wanted to make sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, then following by Latinx Connect uh, to talk about executive path. And then we follow by the, by the uh, media summit when we have uh, several or a couple of days with panels, different speakers, all the studios coming. Um, this is a big event. And of course, then we have our fundraising events, et cetera. So there are many points of contact for Nelly, but also within the year, uh, we, we have uh, mixers. You know, like uh, if let's say that you are a DP or you're interested in becoming one, well, we might have a mixer when there is a smaller groups, when you also are able to connect. So that's what it means to be part of a, a member. But also let's say that you uh, have a question, you know, about how do you submit to a festival? Well, we also offer an leap for our members uh, office hours. This is a concept that I actually, maybe I brought the idea from working from in academia. academia. <laughs> That's amazing. So, I love that. Uh, office hours and not leave. I yeah, love can, can't help it. <laughs> so we have our team. Uh, you schedule your appointment and then you call or not call, but maybe I went in Zoom and say, well, I have a question. And we make sure to, to help you out, either guiding you to the correct resource or to provide you with information that you might be needing. So um, again, it is about having that sense of community and belonging and knowing that there is an organization that cares about you succeeding in this very tough career. So those are at, at glance the services that we provide. Okay, uh, so how is Latino Lens different than the women uh, short film Netflix thing? Or is Latino Lens no longer? No, 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 Latino Lens is what it capsules or all, all the different all programs. Of it. Okay, got it. Okay. Within that, it is the women, um, the Netflix program, the stars program and all the other programs that might be studio supported. Uh, like in um, such as incubators. Um, so that's pretty much what that means is in, into that umbrella. Okay, great. Um, so I have a question. It may not be as relevant right now to our students, but it could be after graduation. Do you guys have Nalib chapters? Uh, like a New York chapter, like if there were some students that were just here for school and would be returning. Are right. There like Chicago or Miami or anything like that? Uh, that is in the works as we are uh, revamping uh, membership. Uh, we are also locating our members that are not necessarily all in LA, but we have, uh, and actually, as you know, Ligia, actually Nalip is registered in New York. That's where it all started. So we do have definitely people and, and networks in New York, uh, Miami, Atlanta, te um, in Texas, uh, Northern California, and we really want to begin those. And I'm always asking members of Nalib, in, like if they are interested to lead one of those chapters, because again, I find it crucial for us to get together, uh, to to have those conversations. And it is important. At the end, it's a national organization, and yes, the reach is national. But I'm really looking forward to uh, revamp um, formally those chapters. Okay, awesome. Uh, another question that's not even in the questions, but just thought about it. So there is a there is a greater need now because I would say mostly because of Amazon Prime and Netflix for Spanish language content, right? There's a lot, and I would say that most of the Latinx content that we're seeing out there is really content that is not necessarily done here. Uh, it's either acquired or they have now, you know, Netflix offices in Mexico, for example, or Brazil or whatever it may be. Um, and I do know that this is a national organization. And I also think it's super important to make sure that the focus is on the Latinx community here, <laughs> because I think studios sometimes get away with just saying we're doing so much for Latinx people, but everything is happening outside of the United States. But with that said, is there any plans or, or any programs or anything like that for people here who are specifically wanting to do Spanish language uh, programming or, or you know, Portuguese in, in the case of, of, of Brazilians? Um, and any, anything like that that you guys do so far or not, not yet or not, not at all? 
Um, I think we're not there yet. Uh, I, yes, and it's really good that you pointed out that there is a big difference between what is produced in the U.S. versus what is abroad. Um, I believe that there is a great opportunity for our um, our talent to develop programs with uh, Latin America. I don't see that there is any, I mean, actually that's an opportunity because believe it or not, but our Latin American countries and the government sometimes provide better funding for projects than the U.S. could. The U.S. government, they don't really do that. We do as organizations. So when there is an opportunity to pair with a Latin American country to produce uh, a project, I find that as an incredible uh, opportunity. It's a great resource. But uh, currently, what we really want to focus first and foremost is to make sure that our U.S. Latinos are within the entertainment and, in, and the whole industry system. And that is the focus of NALIP. We understand that, yes, there is more um, uh, openness for all the streaming services because, yes, productions are um, better. I mean, it's easier financially for them to, to bring tons of content, but that's not the point of what is happening here in the U.S. Uh, representation for the U.S. Latino in the industry in terms of content, it's so tiny that it's not even logical based on the, on the power that Latinos have in the U.S. So the priority right now, it is into focusing into I think the language aspect, then it will be like, you know, the, the cherry of the cake. First, we need yeah. to create that content and really demanding uh, the access um, within all the studio system. Got it. Okay, great. So one of the programs that I'm actually really excited about and interesting that you're launching is the one dealing with a studio positions. Uh, because as you may or may not know, I actually started as a studio and network executive. Mm -hmm. I did not start as a writer. And I would say that the experience that I had both as an executive at the Walt Disney Company and also at Warner Brothers was absolutely transforming for me as I went into writing, mm -hmm. right? Because I had heard pitches. I had heard writers come in and try to sell me a show. Um, but in addition to the development thing is I think I, I think a lot of our students don't understand that for every position that you have in a film, like a producer, you know, a budget person, a line producer, all of that, there is the studio side of that. There is the network side of that. So it's not just development and even in development like current programming versus development, which are two completely different areas in development or in, in television. Um, so they may not necessarily be a producer on a movie. They can actually be a producer or production head or the like the line producer at the studio. Like all of these jobs mm -hmm. or many of these jobs are available in the studio side. So can you talk a little bit about like what the initiative is and why it's important for Nalib to get into? Yes. And, and also um, this is such an important career path that many times, and I understand that aspect where when you are creative, you want to create. I mean, that's the, the, the first impulse. But as you said, uh, what happens when you are in that secret room where the decisions are being made, then that is impact. And unfortunately, uh, nowadays, um, the executives that we have within the studio system, we actually, they are all tracked on a in a list. So if we can track them is because there are so few of them. And that is very worrisome because what happens is that let's say that you, you begin working for a studio and what happens that you also need your community, you need your supporter, you need your champion, and you also need to champion someone else because that's what creates a community with the work, within the work environment. Mm -hmm. And if you, know, if you don't have that, most likely you end up leaving. So we have an issue with retention and then you are not advancing into those positions that are taking the decisions. So we are very interested into going into that area because if we are not seeing our projects on screen is because there, we don't have a champion within the studios understanding what is that we wanna talk about as US Latinos. Um, we are not 
I mean, if a project comes to the table and they might say, oh yeah, sounds good, but I don't really get the joke. I don't really understand this character and understand the emphasis on this cultural aspect. And then the decisions are not made correctly and they are disregarded because there is not, there is no context for that individual. But what happens if we have Latinos in these rooms? Well, it happens such as uh, Blue Beetle. There was a Latino executive on that room the saying, yes, this go, it's a go, it's it's great. We we need this. This is gonna appeal not only for uh, to the general audiences, but also to the Latinos heavily. So uh we are developing a program called um well it's executive leadership program where we are going after those current executives in the studios and going to the studios and saying, okay bring this person, refer me someone that has the capability of becoming that decision maker so we can actually change this industry. Creating cohorts, again, creating that sense of community of belonging and a support network that helps one another just a step, going step after step and going higher and higher and higher uh, so that we can actually see um, well faster changes in the industry. Yeah, so you, uh, I mean, another example of mm -hmm. uh, another example of that is uh, which I just found out about because I'm about to go in and pitch at Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. uh, and somebody there says, "Make sure that this person is in the room mm -hmm. uh, who is a Latina executive," and the reason why they wanted that is because um, they were gonna they were gonna the, the the people that told me this is like they were pitching um, the horror of Dolores Roach. Mm -hmm which was a podcast that became a TV series. Mm -hmm. And they said she was instrumental in getting Amazon to agree to mm -hmm. make that podcast into a series. And so it really is, it really does matter to have someone in the room that can speak to what we want to do and our cultures and uh, the stories that we're interested in. And so that's why I think this particular program is super important. It is uh, very, very important. Yeah. yeah. Um, and hopefully I can be helpful to you guys with that, by the way. Um, but um, before we open it up for questions, if you can just talk a little bit about like all, a lot of people I'm sure in this conversation are aspiring filmmakers, uh, but still in school. So what do you think could better prepare them well, there, like we've talked about internships, obviously, I'm a huge supporter of internships. I run the internship program in the TV department, TVF department. So, but can you maybe talk a little bit? And and I would love to hear also from Ian, like, what have you done? You know, and Jose, what have you done that is going to, that that prepared you or have prepared you now uh, once you join the industry as a young filmmaker or even still a college student? If we can talk a little, like maybe everybody share uh, some of the things that you guys have done, that would be great. And then we'll open it up for questions. Um, I will say that um, we always hear about the word networking. Uh, networking, the way that I interpret it is the friends that you have today that you're sharing that created appeal, the passion and uh, the purpose they are your network. As you go through all the years, you're all gonna, gonna advance and the ones that may be a little bit behind, they're gonna be pulled by the other one that had. So stick to your friends. Uh, that will be my, my first advice because in this industry, what is needed is to have a strong, tight community so can, we can keep pushing forward. Um, so that will be my, my quick advice. But what about you, Ian? Um, yeah, that's great advice. Um, just to uh, kind of give a brief background, um, it's super important to stay connected um, with all of your friends, your classmates, um, always maybe not volunteer time, but just be open to doing anything. Um, and by that, I mean, you never know where your career is gonna take you. Um, a year ago, I was a retail manager, and now I am here at Nalip and doing events. I'm helping people network. Um, and in part of that, of what Diana was just talking about, is I actually met Jose um, at Cal State Northridge, and we did our senior thesis uh, production together, and I was a producer, and he was a writer. Um, and, you know, those connections in the long term uh, really 
give you opportunities in the future um, to either help review material, give feedback, or even when their jobs are looking for new roles, uh, new people to hire, um, your friends are gonna be the first ones that they go to. Um, and that's kind of how I ended up here in the nonprofit world is because of say. Um, but yeah, that would be my advice. Be open to anything and stay connected with your uh, friends because those are gonna be your network for life. Jose? Yeah, of course, I mean, I don't wanna sound like a broken record, but um, your community is the most important thing, uh, your community and your network. Uh, coming out of school, I had no idea how to navigate the industry at all. It was like this big scary thing. Um, and one of the things that I ended up learning was like at Nalip events, you go to these events and you meet so many amazing people um, who are just there to get to know you too. Um, and not just that, but you know, there's other film festivals that you can volunteer uh, and then just meet people at your level. Um, because I feel like also part of our mentality is like always get to know people who are like super advanced uh, and get mentorship, but and which is also great. But I feel like you also should focus on getting to know people at your level. So when you come up together, uh, you're able to kind of like bring that network together and, you know, expand even bigger, um, reach bigger audiences, if anything. Great. Yeah, um, may I add one more thing? Yeah, 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 please. Yeah, um, I also just want to put out there, because I know, especially for me and Jose, we graduated during the pandemic. So um, it was very scary coming out of school. Um, and I guess the other really big advice I would give to anyone in college or about to graduate, um, one, don't compare yourself to other people's careers. That's only going to really hurt you in the long run. Um, you, Everyone has a very different journey when they get their upbringing into the entertainment industry. And um, not everyone's path is going to be the same. Um, so if you see your friends like working on TV shows or um, in the studios, um, it's as simple as remembering to tell them a happy birthday. And just to remember that those connections are there and not to compare yourself to them and your time will come. Um, and then I think I, or I just said that I was a retail manager one year ago. Up until then, I maintained a lot of my relationships uh in school or from school and you know i've had offers within the past year to work on different reality shows and uh working here at Nalip and just working on other cool projects that i had never thought i would have saw myself have um a year ago when i wasn't in the entertainment industry yeah uh, those are such great great uh pieces of advice i would add a couple of things which is one is there, I, I mean, <laughs> for those of you who may want to be actors, okay, we have a strike ongoing. Go to the picket line. Even if it's for an hour, you know, even if it's like once a week, you are going to meet hundreds of writers, hundreds of actors. I was going to say, if you were a writer, the summer would have been fantastic for you to meet because you were meeting executive producers, but you were meeting showrunners assistants and writers PAs and writers assistants that could actually you befriend and could help you get jobs. But with actors now on the picket, many actors are writers, many actors are producers, many actors have their own production company. That production company might have an internship. That production company may be doing a movie soon that you could be a part of. And so I would just say, go to a picket, any picket and try to figure out, and maybe like if you're too afraid to go by yourself and you don't want to talk to anybody, maybe the first time you go with a friend from school and you, and that gets, but you're literally just walking. You're literally walking for hours and hours and hours and you get to meet people and you usually get to get fed too. Uh, the second thing I would say, like when you are doing an internship, many times the people that get hired into that internship are from various schools. And so all of a sudden, you're increasing your network because all of a sudden, you also met a student that is at USC or at AFI or at Northridge. And that expands your network when you leave. So 
also think of internships, not just of what you're going to be getting, and you're going to be getting a lot in an internship, but it's also like, who are the other contacts that I can make that are in the same position that I am still in school, still trying to get into the industry and make friends with those people? Because also the resources at a, another school might be greater or might be different. And they might be able to help you navigate certain things that you may not even know about by just creating your, your network that way. And then the last thing I would say is start saving money. Maybe you don't have the money right now, but join Film Independent as well as Nali. You know, start going to the events that like the, like the, the Writers Guild events are not open to anybody except guild members, but the Writers Guild Foundation all of their panels and programs are for everybody. Anybody can go. And many of them now are on Zoom. So it's also a way to educate yourself outside of the school about many, many things that are happening through uh, the, the Writers uh, Guild uh, Foundation. Uh, so those were just a couple of additional things that I wanted to add to the great uh, advice that they gave you. Uh, we have a few minutes. We can open it up for questions. Uh, it went a little bit longer than I thought, but um, Priscilla, right. are, are you yes. handling the questions? Yes. Uh, can we give the Nalik team a great, a virtual round of applause for that great discussion? Thank you all for, for the great answers. Uh, so we have time for a few questions submitted by our attendees. So the first question, during downtimes in the industry, for example, the strikes, have you ever thought about moving away from working in entertainment? I would love to say yes. Um, part of me, I mean, I always wanted to come back, but I feel like during the strikes and everything was a bit slower. Um, you kind of find yourself wanting to do something uh, that helps you pay the bills. Uh, so I feel like if you do venture into doing something outside of entertainment, don't feel afraid to do it and then just do it and then come back. Um, or if you have a remote job that you can find and then still work on the side, uh, just to make that money. I think it's like, it's about sustainability, if anything. Diana, did you have anything to add? I know you've been in the workforce for a few years. Yes, no, that's, um, yeah, there is no straight path. And, and showing up is the main main aspect of, of this career. Thank you. And, and Diana, while we have you unmuted, uh, another question that we received was, what was the most valuable skill you gained from your communications degree? How does it help you navigate your career in the entertainment industry? Is there anything current communication studies or communications majors should keep in mind? Yeah, so the tools that a career gives you, uh, sometimes, you know, I was wondering, did I learn something in college? Did I have something at my master's degree? And I think the main tool that you acquire, even without you noticing, is about critical thinking. And it's about questioning the things that you do, what you read, and how you respond to, to situations. I think that's uh, a skill that I always appreciate and that is intrinsic to what college gives you. When you are writing an essay and you're wondering, why do I have to write this essay again? And you know, then those uh, tasks or homeworks that might not be that appealing, well, they're the most important because uh, once you had that moment to reflect in the work that you do, or even, I mean, let's say that you want to become a writer into having that moment of thinking of receiving the feedback and so forth. Those are the tools that really keep you open uh, to, to the opportunities and to advance uh, towards new opportunities. So um, I think that all the, all the different, uh, the things that you learn through, through college and, and, and beyond, they are all of use for, for your career, even without you noticing it. It's just that then you wonder like, oh, how come I can do this like so quick or so well or so forth. So it just through time. I think it's it's time that, that takes you there. And in terms of uh, communication, I mean, the field is changing so dramatically um, that is uh, to be determined into what are those programs academically that we need to look into as we are entering a, uh, the world of AI and and how media has been transformed. So so yeah, I'm I'm very curious into what would what would those be uh, as we change. Thank you, Diana. So communications majors, keep at it. Don't give up. Oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, Ian and Jose, 
have either of you worked on any mini documentaries, you know, five to 20 minute formats for YouTube? Uh, this person is interested in perhaps the producer side of that type of work and what it's like to do online content for an organization. Cool. I have not worked on documentaries at all, uh, but yeah, maybe you have some insight on like producing a mini series, uh, if anything. Um, yeah, so I mean, although our, my senior thesis was not uh, a documentary, um, it was a four episode mini series that was on YouTube. Um, I guess the biggest advice here is just staying super organized and using all of those production tools like um, Asana or uh, movie, is it movie maker? movie maker budgeting i think or movie magic i can't remember the name but using tools like that they're going to be super helpful for you to develop um, the idea and just being involved in all the steps um, from creation um and then also having it's like the the two like the angel and the devil you have the creative and then like the budget and all of that side um just keeping you balanced um so that you can create uh, your mini series. I'm sorry, did that answer your question? I think that was helpful. I think that was a good, yeah. uh, good answer. So stay I organized. Think, to the, I think that a little bit to that in, in particular with documentaries is that uh, I think the most important person in a documentary besides you as the creator is your editor. Uh, because a movie is shot where you don't have a script, right? In most cases with a documentary, you're doing a lot of interviews and then you're figuring out how those interviews are going to be molded into an actual story. And so documentary filmmaking is very different that way than, than a movie that has a script first. And so your editor becomes vital in terms of making and communicating your vision properly um so I, I would just say think about that a little bit either whether you are the editor or or asking somebody else to be the editor is a very important role in a documentary whether it's five minutes or two hours great okay. thank, you. thank you everyone i i wanted to pop back in and and thank everyone i think we are we have completed this discussion it's been a pleasure this is my last um seminar of the series and I really hope that everybody enjoyed it. I think there's tons of information and this last seminar means a lot to me because um, one of my first internships, I was I had the opportunity to meet Lihia and we've been friends forever. And my first or second job, I worked at Nalip and I used to be their conference director. So a lot ties in here going back to, you know, keeping in contact with those you meet along the way. So I want to thank everyone. Thank you, Diana. You're, you're the thank one that's you, going to come and teach here. I oh yeah, and I and I recommended Lee here. You're, to you're the Cal one that State said LA. you should you should teach it at Cal State LA. Um, I wanted to ask something of Priscilla. I think if you're still here, Priscilla, uh, because we didn't give enough time for the Q and A. If there's a way that we can print that out and maybe send it out so that they can, do you guys mind doing that, Diego and Jose and Ian, that maybe we can um, answer them via email and then Priscilla can post it or something like that? Would, would you guys be open to that? Of course, yeah. 